Hi guys, Angel Fishkeeper here, and today I'm going to do a video on breeding angelfish. So I've been breeding angels for about in between six and eight years now. You know, I've put probably over 10,000 angelfish into the UK market over the years. Um, so this is going to be my, the way I do things, you know, and it is a proven way. But, you know find your own way stick with it because some granted some people won't like the way i do things but i'm going to talk you through that now and the first thing you're going to want to do if you're looking into breeding angels is look into the variety that you want to breed so the way i would do this is go around your local fish shops ask them the variety that they sell more of you know, because just because an angelfish can fetch money doesn't mean it will. Like, you know, it's no good breeding all the angels to like a small pet shop. You know, because they're, they're not really going to sell. You know, a hundred quid a fish. You know, so you need to kind of look at what angels are going to be best for you to buy to sell um, to breed on. So. Things like koi angels, black angels, and your gold veil angels or silver angels are your more common varieties. And then you've got things like your platinum blue silvers, what I've got here. They don't fetch huge money, so they're still a good choice for breeding. But then you've got to basically decide you've got four genuses of angelfish to choose from. You've got the scalar, which is what I've got here, so they fall under the category Terraphyllum scalar, or scalari, however you want to say it, and that's these guys. Then you've got Terraphyllum altum, Terraphyllum manacoparu, which are basically the same coloration as these guys, but with a red back. They've got the black stripes, and then you've got Terraphyllum leopoldi, which you don't see very often because they have a more curved head and they have the false eye spot in the in between the two main bars there they've got like a black spot and it acts as a false eye spot for predators and they can fetch money if you're selling them in the right areas but you don't see them very often and you have got other angels like your crosses like your dantum angels which is an altum crossed with a Scalar, and then you've got like Rio Nene, and they're just basically wild caught silvers, if you ask me. You know, with a little bit of red freckling on the back. Um, but yeah, figure out what type of angelfish you want to breed as well. Bearing in mind, if you do go with scalars like this guy, bear in mind they're very inbred nowadays, so it gets harder and harder each time to distinguish male from female. But the way I do it is these two fins here, the ventral fins, if they get really long streamers and they start going past the anal fin like his do, you know it's a male. If they don't go past the anal fin like hers, it's a female. And that's one way I've found to be pretty much 95% accurate most of the time. But the only way to be 100%, you know, there's people say things like the body shape, the males will have a more circular body, females is more like a diamond shape. You know, you can, you can get it the other way around because they're that inbred. You know, the males genuinely get a nuchal hump, like a small nuchal hump, but females can get them as well with them being so inbred. So that's not a positive way to really tell. The only 100% way is through the ovipositor, which is the breeding tube. And that comes down in between the anal and ventral fins there, like bang on in the middle. Uh, basically, you can see one there. Ooh. Just there. So on them. The males will be either pointing forwards or backwards, but it will end in a point. 
whereas the females is blunt and that's basically where they deliver the sperm and eggs from you will want to provide them with flat surfaces either like amazon sword leaves java fern leaves any sort of plant leaf that they can lay against or you can put something like this in which is just a piece of slate other people use like breeding cones which is just a terracotta terracotta cone they use for breeding just any sort of vertical surface even the sponge filter outputs are normally suffice enough for that um, so yeah the only 100% way to sex angelfish is through the ovipositor Males is pointed, females is blunt. Uh, best way to get pairs, because obviously you can only sex them from eight months to a year, really, because that's when they start showing breeding behaviour. Um, and the younger you breed them, the better, rather than the older. So, buy them in groups of about six to eight buy them fairly small and then they'll form pairs naturally so I would try and keep your angelfish the same but if you can try and get them from I guess separate batches so you know you're not inbreeding because normally when you get a full batch and you just buy a few out of there they're generally all brother and sister and you don't really want to be breeding those together you kind of want to breed two three generations in between so you're putting strong genes back into weak fish you know because if you just keep breeding inbreeding and inbreeding look at guppies for example <laughs> they're a prime example they don't get anywhere near as big as they used to through inbreeding now Angels are the same. They're fairly easy fish to breed. You know, as long as both sexes are present um, and your water, water quality is great. What I like to do is, if in my any of my other tanks I have pairs that are laying eggs, the male and female actually release pheromones into the water which is like a hormone, um, a breeding hormone. And it basically just warns all the other fish in the tank, especially other angelfish, that there's breeding going on, stay away. So what I like to do is, if I've got another pair breeding in another tank, I'll take a jug of water out and I'll pour it into the tank I want the fish to breed in. And that way, that'll get that existing male that isn't yet breeding. He'll be like, oh wait, I've got competition. And it normally, that's the best way I've found it. And that tends to work. You're adding the pheromones from another tank into the tank with the fish you want to breed. And it gets them breeding. Also, I just do a 30% water change. And I just put pure cold water in. I don't bother preheating it. You know, it goes in cold. And if all eggs go white within a f the first day, they weren't fertilised. And I like to leave my parents in with the eggs because that also creates a weaker fish down the line. Angelfish just, they're not bad parents it's just they haven't they don't get the chance to become good parents because people take the eggs away straight away if you just leave them in with the eggs yes they might eat the first few batches but that's because they don't know what they're doing and I mean taking the eggs away isn't going to help them you know so if you leave the eggs in they'll get the hang of it they'll learn how to fan them they'll learn they need to take care of them might take you a few tries and yes it's frustrating to watch but if you just let them do it they'll get the hang of it by all means remove the babies once they're free swimming but if you just leave the eggs in 
they'll be perfectly fine, they'll get the hang of it. So that's what I do with mine. I let them look after the eggs. You know, it's less hassle for me as well to have to rear the eggs as well as the fry. So I just let the fish do it naturally, they fan the eggs with their fins. You know, it's really cool to watch rather than having to put it in a jar with an air stone. And I don't like to use methylene blue. I know loads of people swear by it, but I can't stand the stuff. So I don't use methylene blue. I just let the parents do it naturally. You know, it's a lot more rewarding that way as well, rather than just putting eggs in a jar and watching them hatch. It's a lot more rewarding to see it naturally happen with the parents fanning the eggs. So... The eggs take three days to hatch, then they become wigglers. Sometimes it's two days, you know, it's generally around the third day though. And around the seventh day, they'll become free swimming. And from that stage, they'll have used up their yolk sacs. So you want to start feeding them on newly hatched baby brine. And if you don't want to use baby brine shrimp, use what I also do when it works is I just get my Tetra Pro colour I grind it into a fine powder and the babies will eat that as well obviously you don't put too much in and you'll be feeding them that for probably a month to two months before you move them on to like bloodworm larger foods basically so yeah, these guys have had two spawns, they've eaten both, but you know, I'm just going to keep trying with them. I mean, obviously if it get, does get excessive and you lose a lot of spawns through them just eating them, then by all means take the eggs out and do it yourself. Because if they don't grasp it by the fourth attempt, they're probably not going to. But that's not their fault. That's the inbreeding. They've kind of had the parental care bred out of them, to be honest. But if we just leave them in with the eggs so they can learn to take care of them, it'll be bred back in. And yes, I breed mine in a community-style setup. I don't breed them in a bear tank. You know, I like to breed them in a naturalist style you know I mean this tank isn't really natural it's natural fish wise but by the plants I mean all the plants I've got in here are from Asia you know not South America so it's not exactly a natural tank but all the fish are from the same place so yeah that's really all you need to know about raising angelfish the fry are fairly easy to raise I like to do start my water changes after they become free swimming and I'd probably do them three times a week. I like to have a bare bottom on the fry tank so I can remove any uneaten food immediately so it doesn't foul the water and obviously kill the fry. Um, but you don't need to feed them for basically the first week after they hatch because they've still got the yolk sacs and that's giving them food so you don't want to feed the tank at that time so yeah that's just a guide on breeding angelfish so kind of it's the same method for all even if you do have the wild angels you know the breeding's just the same they're no harder to breed autumn angels can be a bit tricky especially if you've got wild caught autumns because you need RO water you know because they haven't been quite adjusted to the to the tap water pHs yet so they're still in pHs of like 6 and below so RO water is best for those and for autumns not to be classed as wild they need to be 2-3 generations old so that's not F1 it's F2 or F3 because F1 fry are fry 
from wild caught parents so that makes the babies wild even if they were born in captivity it makes them wild they need to be bred a few generations down the line to be classed, classed as domesticated and then we'll get slightly easier to breed so yeah that's it thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe bye